in our dingo enclosure here we've got our four young dingoes. We've got two males and two females. This boy here, his name is Jingo and he's one of our two males. And his full brother is the other little black guy over there. And then Jara is up here. She's one of our females. And Shiloh is her sister. And she's the little white one that we have. Now a lot of people think that dingoes are a type of dog. They're actually a type of wolf. Originally they were scientifically classified as Canis familiaris dingo which means that they are a type of dog because Canis familiaris is the scientific classification for dogs. However, recent studies have indicated and shown that they are actually a wolf and their new classification is Canis lupus dingo. Canis lupus being the classification of wolf. They are very different from domestic dogs in many ways. Dingoes have the ability to move each year independently they also have a very big range of movement on their front wrist. Are you going to help demonstrate that for us, little Jarrah? Come on. Good girl. Up here. Let's show everybody. Okay. Now they can rotate their wrist quite well. You're not being very sociable, are you? In fact, their range of movement on their front wrist is almost identical to ours. Another thing that dingoes can do that domestic dogs can't do, they can be looking square on at somebody and then without moving any other part of their body they can swing their head right around and look directly over their tailbone. Another trick that dingoes have up their sleeve for survival is because they're natural hunters and scavengers, they may be scavenging around rock crevices like this one over here and they might go looking down into that hollow there for something to eat and they might get themselves stuck on their back hip area here. Now most normal dogs would end up being stuck there permanently. However dingoes will free themselves by simply just dislocating their back leg out of their hip socket, both sides. That makes it very thin down this end. They then use their strong front legs to pull themselves through and then when they're safe they just have the ability to pop their legs back into their hip socket and then they'll just wander off as if nothing's happened. So they're very, very good survivors, these guys. Another difference between dingoes and domestic dogs is in the teeth structure. If you notice, hold still, if you notice the big gaps, you're not being cooperative. If you notice the big gaps in their bottom teeth and their top teeth, hold up. Come here. Do it this way. Good boy. These teeth between the canines and the molars have got very big gaps. That makes it a lot more efficient for ripping and tearing flesh off bones. Now any of you that have got domestic dogs, if you have a look at your dog's teeth, you'll notice that they're all jammed up very close together like that. Because they don't need to rip flesh off bones. So that's another difference between the dingo and the domestic dog. The obvious colour that everybody thinks about when they think about dingoes is the ginger colour. However, the white colour and the black colour are just recessive genes in the colour setup of a dingo. It is quite common and it occurs throughout Australia through all the different types of dingoes because we have the alpine type, the desert type, the tropical type, the Kimberley and the Pilbara types. They're all exactly the same dog, it basically just means different types of coats but the colour variation does occur. Now, 2 to 3% of the dingo populations throughout Australia are the white colour, and about 3 to 4% of dingo populations are what we refer to as the black and tan or the tricolour. He's a boy. Good boy. Well done. Come on.
Thank you. 